moderator today. We're glad to have Johan Nickel with us, who will be presenting this series. He is a certified Microsoft 365 trainer and passionate senior cloud solution architect with great experience in developing and integrating applications with Azure Active Directory. He is currently based in Switzerland. If you happen to face any audio or video issues during the webcast or have any technical questions, please post them in the Q&A panel and our team is here to help you. Now I'd like to turn today's event over to our presenter. Johan, you have the floor now. Hi and warm welcome to day one of MS101, Microsoft 365 Mobility and Security. Okay, let's take a look on the course overview, how we structured this course. On day one, we focus on the implementation of modern device services. On day two, on the implementation of Microsoft 365 Security and Threat Management. Day three will be completely on the fact of implementing data loss prevention and sensitivity labels. And day four, will be around the management of data governance, auditing and reporting. We can start with the technical discussions about the implementation of modern device services. Let's start with a device management overview. Basically, a device management allows you as an administrator to protect and secure your organizational resources and data on any different device. It can be an iOS device, an Android, a Windows, and a Mac OS device. And specifically, um, you are allowed to make sure that devices and apps are compliant with your organizational security requirements. To keep care about this, you can create policies that help you to keep your organizational data safe and you are able to do that on organizational owned or on personal devices to support or bring your own device strategy. The main focus uh, of Intune is to provide you both functionalities, the mobile device management and the mobile application management, where we really take a closer look later on in this module what this really means. And specifically, Microsoft Intune provides a single unified mobile solution to create and to enforce policies on your different device types. And it helps you to protect your company information on that devices. Intune is uh, based on the Microsoft 365 uh, licensing package or a standalone version and is uh, closely integrated with the Azure Active Directory. On this slide, we will take a closer look on the device lifecycle. Basically, we start with the enrollment process. Because today's mobile device management MDM strategies have to deal with a variety of phones, uh, tablets, PCs like iOS, iPadOS, Android, Windows, or Mac OS X systems. And if you need to be able mm, to manage the device, which is commonly the case for corporate owned devices, the first step is really to set up the device enrollment. And you can also manage Windows PCs by enrolling them with Intune MDM or installing specifically the Intune client software on it. Then we go through the configuration part. Because getting your devices enrolled is just obviously the first step of the task. And to take the advantage of all that Intune offers and to ensure really that your devices are secure and compliant with company standards, you can choose from a wide range of policies. This let you configure almost every aspect of how managed devices operate in a real practical scenario. For example, uh, should users have a password on devices that have company data, uh, you can require one for example, or do you have a corporate Wi-Fi and you can automatically configure it and there are a lot of different configuration steps what you can do, like a device configuration. With these policies, you will, uh, will be able to configure the features and capabilities of the device that you manage. For example, you could require the use of a password on Android phones or disable the use of a camera on an iPhone, for example. Another important aspect is the company resource access. For example, when you let users uh, access their work on their personal device. And 
This can present, obviously, a lot of different challenges in your case. For example, how uh, do you ensure that all devices that need to access company email are really configured correctly? Or how can you ensure that users can access the company network with a VPN connection without having to know complex settings, for example? Or, yeah, obviously all of this stuff in this case, Intune really can help you to reduce your disburdens and it automatically configures the devices and uh, does the common uh, access tasks and everything for you. Another part is the Windows PC management where you have policies uh, which is included in the Intune client software. So when you enroll a Windows PC with Intune, it gives you the most device management capabilities. And Intune continues to support managing your Windows PCs with the Intune client software in specific. So there is really a great opportunity that you also can work with Windows 10 clients, for example, to have a great management over it. And the other aspect is the protection. So in our, yeah, let's say modern IT world, we need to protect devices from unauthorized access. And this is one of the most important tasks you really need to perform, I think. And in addition, uh, you need to have some configuration steps of the, the device lifecycle itself. And um, for sure, you get all of this out of Intune and this feature set in that specifically point. Um, to allow you to manage really your devices and to provide um, a great security scenario to prohibit unauthorized access or malicious attacks, for example. Another great component is the multi-factor authentication. So to add really an extra layer of authentication to the user sign-in process. And this can help really to make devices even more secure in that way. Many devices obviously support multi-factor authentication and that requires a really a second level of authentication, such as a phone call or text message, a push message, uh, before, for example, the user can gain access to the resources he needs. Another uh, great aspect is the Windows Hello for Business. Um, you can directly work through with Intune for Windows Hello for Business as an alternative sign-in method that really allows uh, your users to use a gesture such as a fingerprint or Windows Hello really to sign in without the need of a password. On the other hand, we have the policies to protect really Windows PCs. And you can do that around with all the endpoint protection stuff what's included in, including software updates, firewall settings, BitLocker, and many more settings what you need for. The last step, I think, in the cycle is the process of the retirement. So when a device, for example, gets lost or stolen, um, or it simply when it needs to be replaced, so or when it's moving to uh, another user on another position, for example, it's uh, usually time really to retire or to wipe the device. And there are a number of ways you can do that, including resetting the device, removing it from the management, and wiping the culprit data on it. So you see here, we have, with Intune, we have really a closed device lifecycle management on board, and we can do a lot of things around. Microsoft Intune provides basically two main feature sets for mobile device management, MDM, or on the other hand, mobile application management. As you see on the figure, uh, Microsoft Intune is a poor cloud service itself and it's well integrated into Azure Active Directory. So on the other hand, we see some different connectors. You can call the Grave API to gather information, for example. You can use a telecom expanse management connector. You can integrate into mobile threat defense connectors and also in network access control partner topics. You see there is the uh, complete integration into the conditional access topic and specifically in the device compliance results which we can use in the conditional access policies which we take a look on it later in this module. On the other hand, I want to really give you some information about the differences. And basically mobile device management takes control 
over the complete device itself. So you can control and provide the apps, what are installed, which can be installed. You define different security functionalities and whatever. So you control the complete device. On the other hand, the mobile application management, it's focusing not on providing pre-configured scenarios, not controlling the complete device itself. It's focusing on the application. So there are specific applications that can be installed or used on your uh, client itself, and they can be protected. For example, you can um, assign um, a pin, uh, you can assign uh, copy and paste regulations so that you can't go from the business context to the private context with the copy and paste or that is for example not allowed to save a word document in a private OneDrive for business for example. This is basically what does Microsoft Intune so in fact it helps you to uh, configure your devices to protect your data to manage your apps uh, with a complete uh, cloud approach itself. Okay, let's take a closer look how Microsoft Intune works and how it is and what it is specifically. So Intune is basically a cloud-based service that helps you to enable your workforce to be productive like keeping, for example, your corporate data protected by managing your mobile devices and apps. Microsoft Intune specifically integrates closely with Azure Active Directory for the identity and access management tasks and the Azure Information Protection Strategy to protect your data on the device. So when you use it with Microsoft 365, you can enable it uh, for your workforce to be productive on all their devices and you keep all the specific aspects of your organization's information security uh, really close in a package and it works well to protect your data and your devices. With Intune you can, for example, manage the mobile devices and PCs of your workforce uh, that they use to access your company data. You can manage the mobile apps and specifically also as well for your workforce. And you can protect your company information uh, by helping to control the way your workforce assesses and shares it, for example. And closely, you can ensure that devices and apps are compliant with your company security requirements. As I already mentioned, Intune integrates closely with Azure Active Directory for identity and access control and the Azure information protection aspects. So you can also integrate it with a system center configuration manager to extend your management capabilities. In the diagram you see on this slide, you can see how Microsoft Intune specifically interacts with the other components in both in your on-premises and in the cloud infrastructure. We have several scenarios with Azure Active Directory where we provide, for example, over ADFS or uh, pass-through authentication, the specifically single sign-on scenarios, uh, the synchronization over Azure AD Connect, uh, from the local Active Directory to Azure Active Directory for this scenario. And then we have the interaction between Azure AD for authentication authorization for the Microsoft 365 services where the data requests happen from the specific devices. And we have Intune as the management part specifically for the mobile devices and your PCs what you work in your scenario in your organization. And we have this Intune administrative console where you as an IT administrator can specifically configure and monitor your solution in specific. Okay, let's take a closer look on the co-management perspective what we have. The co-management is one of the primary ways to attach your existing configuration manager deployment to the Microsoft 365 cloud world. It helps you really to unlock additional cloud-powered capabilities like conditional access and other features. The co-management enables you to concurrently manage Windows 10 devices by using your uh, configuration manager and your Microsoft Intune instance. And it lets you uh, cloud attach your existing, um, for example, investments in configuration manager by adding the new functionality. So if you use co-management, 
you have really the flexibility to use the technology solution that works best for your organization. You can mix it up and you can work as expected really with all the different feature sets. When a Windows 10 device, for example, has the Configuration Manager client and it's enrolled to Intune, you get the benefits of both services. So you can control which workloads, um, if any, you switch the authority from configuration, configuration Manager to Intune and so on. So the Configuration Manager continues uh, to manage all other workloads, including those workflows that you don't switch to Intune, for example, and all other features of Configuration Manager that co-management doesn't support, for example. If you want to switch workloads uh, to Intune from Configuration Manager, uh, we need to talk a bit about a few feature sets. So, for example, if you want to switch workloads in version 1902 and earlier, you can switch these workloads when you enable co-management or later when you are ready, for example. If you haven't already enabled co-management, so you can do that at first. After you enable co-management, you can modify the settings in the co-management properties, for example. This you can do at first in the Configuration Manager console, where you go to the Administration Workspace, expand the Cloud Services and select the co-management node in specific. Then you can select the co-management object and choose the specific properties in the ribbon. And you will be prompted really to sign into Azure Active Directory. Um, and the prompt doesn't block you from updating your onboarding, for example. However, you will be prompted each time you open the properties page until you do the sign in uh, for the specific service. Then you can switch to the workloads tab. And by default, all the workloads are set to configuration manager setting. So to switch a specific workload, move the slider control for that workload to the desired setting. I think it's, it's obvious to do that. Just about the settings, configuration manager, which is continues to manage the specific workload. Pilot Intune is the option which you can switch this workload only for devices in the pilot collection. And you can change the pilot collection on the staging tab of the co-management properties page, for example. And if you choose Intune, you directly switch this workload for all Windows 10 devices enrolled in co-management. On the other hand, we have this staging tab where the co-management properties page exists, where you can change the pilot collection for your workloads if you need that and just click OK and save the properties and you're done for this specific scenario. Another option you can use is the company portal app on co-managed devices. Uh, starting in version 2006, uh, the company portal uh, have now been cross-platform app and gives you a great experience for the Microsoft Endpoint Manager. By configuring co-management devices, to also use the company portal, you can provide a consistent user experience on all devices. So the company portal supports a few actions that you can use in that case. For example, to launch the company portal app on co-management devices and sign in with your Azure Active Directory single sign-on. You can view your available and installed configuration manager apps in the company portal alongside the Intune apps, for example. And you can install available Configuration Manager apps from the company portal and receive the installation status of the information. So you have really a great option to work in this co-management scenario with the company portal that is a cross-platform app. So we uh, divide the Windows 10 management components in two parts. The first part is the management client itself, which periodically synchronizes with the other component, the management server, uh, to check for updates and it applies the latest policies, Windows updates, and a lot of different other functionalities on the device itself. And on the other hand, as I mentioned, the enterprise management server with which the enrollment client communicates for the enrollment and for the configuration of the management client itself. So there are a lot of nice things what we can do with that and a specific um, 
Third-party MDM servers can also manage Windows 10 by using the MDM protocol. And the built-in management client is also able to communicate with a third-party server proxy that supports the protocols outlined in the documentation to perform enterprise management tasks. So you are free to use the set of Microsoft Intune itself uh, with the mobile device management capabilities or mobile application management, or you can also use a third-party MDM server to manage Windows 10. Obviously, for this exam, we will focus on the Microsoft Intune perspective uh, that provides you the correct information for your exam preparation to fulfill all the stuff for the exam itself. Another great feature about the Windows MDM uh, security options are the security baselines, which you can use uh, from the Intune perspective. Uh, with these security baseline settings, uh, Microsoft Intune supports your devices that you run on Windows 10 or later, for example. So we have different default values for settings in the baseline that represent a recommended configuration for your uh, applicable devices. And your defaults, what you can use on that, uh, for example, might not match uh, defaults from other security baselines or from other versions with this baseline. So you need to have really always a closer look to the baseline version and which topics it supports and review the um, specific security baselines on this uh, part here. We have obviously different, um, yeah, let's say baselines like the Microsoft Security Baseline for August 2020, as it mentioned here on uh, the slide deck. And this version of the Security Baseline, for example, replaces previous versions and it's going so on if you work with newer baselines in this specific part. So what you need to keep care about is that profiles that were created prior to the availability of the specific baseline versions, um, you are now ready uh, to hold them read only, and you can continue to use those profiles, but you can't edit them to change the configuration of this. They can be updated to the latest version, and after the update uh, of the current baseline version, you can edit the profile to modify the specific settings. I really highly recommend here to have a closer look on docs.microsoft.com where you see the Intune security baselines to have um, this specific versioning inside of this baseline set. Uh, make you familiar with this option also for your deployment. It gives you really a great option to see the different settings and all of stuff what you need for your organization. So what do we really expect after we set or change the MDM authority? Um, under the hood, when the Intune service detects that a tenant's MDM authority has been changed, um, it sends out a notification message to all the enrolled devices to check in and synchronize with the service. So even uh, for devices that are powered on and online during this change of the MDM authority, there will be a delay of up to eight hours. It depends on the timing of the next scheduled regular check-in. So a user in specific can quickly change to the new MDM authority if he starts a manual check-in from the device to the service itself. And the user can easily make this uh, change by using the company portal app and initiating a device compliance check. To validate that the things are working correctly after a device have checked in and synchronized with the service, after the change in the MDM authority, uh, we take a look for the devices uh, into the Configuration Manager console if we had a hybrid environment before. Now that we have planned and set our MDM authority in Tune, we can talk about enrolling our devices. And for this, and specifically, there's a feature set uh, that allows us to do some enrollment restrictions. The, for example, that you can build up uh, restriction policies that includes maybe the number of devices that a user can register, uh, the operating systems and the versions itself, or maybe you can create multiple restrictions and apply them to different user groups and you're also allowed to um, set a specific priority order uh, for your different restrictions. 
There are specific enrollment restrictions you can apply. For example, you can define a maximum number of enrolled devices. You can say which device platform can be enrolled, maybe the Android uh, Enterprise Work Profile or not. Uh, is it an iOS, a Mac OS, a Windows, or a rarely used Windows Mobile? And you can also define the minimum version or maximum version of the operating system itself. And this works for iOS, for the Android Device Administrator, the Android Enterprise Work Profile, Windows and Windows Mobile. There is also the capability to restrict personally owned devices that uh, say, for example, my personal iOS, Android, as I mentioned before, and the other platform operating systems. But be aware, uh, device limit restrictions don't apply for the following Windows enrollment types. So for co-managed enrollments, for group policy based enrollments, for Azure Active Directory joint enrollments, uh, bulk Azure Active Directory joint enrollments, autopilot enrollments, and I think uh, at least the device enrollment manager enrollments. I think I have all right now in the place. After we have seen the device limit restrictions and we have talked about them, we need to take a closer look on the mobile device enrollment itself to onboard our clients to the MDM solution. So the device itself is configured to communicate with the MDM server using several security precautions uh, during the enrollment process. So the enrollment service verifies that only authenticated and authorized devices can be managed by the enterprise. And there are three phases, the discovery of the enrollment endpoint, second, the certificate installation that we can handle user authentication, the certificate generation, specific the certificate installation and the installed certificates that will be used in future to manage client server as a mutual authentication scenarios um, that's a quite important process into this enrollment so then is there a specific client provisioning and this step configures the device management client to connect specifically to the mobile device management server after the enrollment via the device management sync ML over HTTPS. This is also known as Open Mobile Alliance Device Management OMA DM XML. So just a side note, um, the device is also registered with the Azure Active Directory and this process assigns a unique device identifier to the device and presents the device with the ability to authenticate itself with Azure AD and specifically the device authentication. Subsequently, uh, the device is enrolled for management with the MDM. This is done by calling the enrollment endpoint as we already mentioned and requesting enrollment for the user and the device. And at this point, the user has been authenticated and the device has been registered and authenticated with Azure AD. And the information is made available to the MDM in the form of claims with an access token presented at the enrollment endpoint. So this we need also to know what happens on the Azure Active Directory itself. So corporate owned devices can also be connected to work either uh, by joining the device to an Active Directory domain, as we usually do in an on-premise environment, or an Azure Active Directory, an Azure Active Directory domain. Windows 10 uh, doesn't require a personal Microsoft account on devices joined to Azure AD or an on-premises Active Directory domain. So you can connect a Windows 10 based device uh, by running a Windows 10 professional, enterprise or a Windows 10 education version and it can be connected to an Active Directory domain itself and you can have a called hybrid Azure AD domain join. So your device will be in your local Active Directory and on your Azure Active Directory joined. So this uh, device settings can be done also under the access work or school option in your Windows 10 device. 
be aware mobile devices uh, cannot be connected to an Active Directory domain. Be aware that you also can connect personally owned devices to Azure Active Directory. And in this case, we talk about a bring your own device or BYOD scenario. And the device can be connected to a work or school account or to a mobile device management. In this case also, Windows 10 does not require a personal Microsoft account on devices to connect to work or school. All uh, Windows 10 based devices can be connected to a work or school account. So you can connect to a work or school account either through the settings app or through any of the numerous universal Windows platform apps uh, such as the universal office apps. They will also can enable you to connect to a work or school account. In the next demonstration I will show you how you can use mobile application management with Microsoft Intune. I will give you an example for an iOS uh, deployment for example, what you can do with that and how you can work with this whole scenario in that case. To manage the mobile application management uh, with the Intune component, we go also to the Endpoint Manager. So we see here all the applications that are included, for example, that I can use here. I can specifically define, for example, an iStore app, uh, Microsoft app, Google App Store, all the different topics what I have in place here, including line of business application, Windows apps, Windows 32. Um, also, I can just jump here into the store of that to select the application directly from the store. So I can as a search term, for example, to say I want to see Outlook, Airmail, whatever which application I want to provide inside of my infrastructure to also deploy them to a specific device in a mobile device management scenario, for example, to deploy, configure the settings and so on. On the other hand, what we have in this place here is the app protection policy topic. What I have here with my iOS mom policy, for example, or I have a Windows 10 information protection policy to uh, address different parts here inside of this part to see, okay, how I want to handle specifically the data and the application access on my Windows 10 device, for example. Another option is obviously to use app configuration policies. Just jump in to the managed apps to say, okay, I want to have the managed apps configuration and then I can choose the bundles, for example, what I want to configure in my environment here on this place. For example, my iOS, Azure Information Protection Client, and then I can put in the specific settings, what I get from the documentation, how I need to configure that. It's a poor application uh, configuration set. So basically in an MAM or a mobile application management scenario without an enrollment, I need to configure my application itself. So I can use the functionality like that. Uh, default configuration needs to happen from the user side and with the login to the application, I can apply additional settings to help the user to fulfill the complete profile from the application itself. So that's also a good option to work inside of this scenario. I have also iOS app provisioning profiles, what I can use to apply them to the specific devices and also for Android are different categories available to hold on on the whole application scenarios. Obviously I have um, the other option that I can go from the device perspective that I say, okay, I have complete configuration profiles and obviously application uh, deployments 
for my app itself um, that's basically allowed here to have that including here for example my certificate management and I can add different other configuration steps obviously to configure my email account and all of the other things that's the basic set of an MDM uh, scenario for mobile device management including for example here I can obviously deploy the application to the device itself this is what I mentioned also before so you can use the MIM as a single instance for the protection scenario for security for the application protection policies you can use MDM to enroll to deploy the application to configure it fully on the MIM side you have the option to have a partial configuration option is very limited and you can combine the two scenarios the MIM and the MDM approach together to get the most out of your complete scenario now let's uh, point our view to the compliance to the device compliance um, mobile device management solutions like Intune really can help you to protect your organizational data by let's say requiring users and devices to meet some requirements in your infrastructure um, in Intune this feature set is called a compliance policy a compliance policy, what you can do with that? You can define rules and settings that users and devices must meet to be compliant, obviously. And it can include actions that apply to devices that are not compliant. Actions for non-compliance uh, can, for example, alert users to the conditions of non-compliance and to go through uh, uh, the safeguard of data on non-compliant devices. A great option is to go with conditional access and the device compliance. So you can really see you have a full managed device with Intune that applies to uh, the compliance policy itself. Remember that um, if you just enroll and you don't um, set a specific compliance rule or compliance policy, uh, then the device itself is automatically compliant. So if you adopt obviously your own settings your own things you want to have as a compliance feature inside of that this will really help you to give you more opportunities and more options around that to um, yeah to provide really great security scenarios in that case um, a compliance policy in Intune um, basically uh, figures out that is you have settings for example, tenant-wide settings that are like built-in compliance policies for every device that is receiving for that. And on the other hand is the device compliance policy itself, which provides specific rules. Uh, you can configure and deploy to groups of users or devices and you can, for example, define minimum operating systems for the use of the disk encryption or any other combinations what you like and what you prefer for your needs inside of your organization. For planning uh, your device compliance settings um, it's quite important that you first gather all the requirements from your security policies in the organization. Um, a compliance policy defines uh, these rules and settings that should be configured on a device in order to get this compliance state up to your compliance regulations in your company. Obviously, as we already mentioned, uh, before you can apply a compliance policy, the device must first be enrolled in Intune. So you can do the following things with the compliance policies that they are platform specific. So you can provide also, obviously, compliance policies for all supported device types or you make it platform specific that makes sometimes sense um, in specific if you use iOS or an Android and you have different operating system different attack vectors um, commonly used device compliance settings are most of the time uh, that I require a password to access the device on the other hand a local data encryption but think about the different platforms what they provide 
and specific we have Android for work um, that builds up a specific place on your Android device. Uh, on the other hand, uh, we have um, is a jailbroken or rooted device available. This is also a decision you make on iOS or Android. Um, then, does it make sense because of security reasons to have a minimal OS version required or a maximum OS version allowed? So, this is also a specific thing. Be aware that you can't control, for example, for uh, iOS, um, the OS operating system update. This is done by Apple itself. So on the other hand, uh, we can do, uh, for following that we require a device to be at a mobile threat defense level with an integration of a mobile threat defense uh, tool set uh, that we bring up into the game with Microsoft Intune. So now that we have enabled the capability of enrolling the devices, we can talk about the different device compliance options what we have in Microsoft Intune. We can uh, configure different compliance requirements in rules that uh, acquires that a device pin is set, uh, device encryption is in place, um, or any other kind of uh, compliance what you wish and it's available in Microsoft Intune. So a device compliance policy define uh, the rules and settings that a device must follow to be considered as compliant. So be aware you have always a setting uh, where you set some security rules, policies, and on the other hand, you have the compliance settings that check all the settings you have done before. To use the device compliance, uh, you must have an Intune and Azure Active Directory premium subscription. Uh, device must be running a supported platform. Uh, the device must be enrolled in Intune, obviously, and the devices that are enrolled to either one user or no primary user. These are the requirements uh, that you have with device compliance. Basically, there is one default policy defined that makes your device compliant. So if you don't use more compliance options, you already get compliant with a default policy. To configure and manage your device configurations or compliance settings on a device, you need to assign a policy. And you can do that uh, to a specific user or user set or to groups. So in Azure Active Directory, you mainly create, for example, a group and you can define if it's a static or a dynamic membership. Static membership means that you directly assign the users to the group. And the dynamic membership is that you build a filter that sets a few attributes that need to be uh, in place and the users will be automatically assigned to the group. And this can be also be done with devices, obviously. But um, keep in mind, uh, you cannot do it for user and device in a dynamic membership. So you can only hold one type, user or device. So from my perspective, a tip is if you need to have a user and a device in the group, specifically, you can use a Microsoft 365 group in that case. Now let's come to a very powerful feature set with conditional access that Microsoft provides in this landscape, uh, which brings in the zero trust model into life. So we have different really great options to bring in conditions like where you come from, from which identity provider, is it Azure Active Directory, is it ADFS, is it Microsoft account or is it a Google identity provider or what else. So on the other hand we have the different device types, is it a trusted and compliant device from a perspective of Android, iOS, macOS, Windows or is it combined really with Microsoft Defender for Endpoint that you get additional signals of the security's perspective of this specific device. Or you have another pa pain point, for example, you come from a geolocation, you want to decide you are from the corporate network, from any other network uh, that you come into an application access. Then the definition about is it a browser app, is it a client app, whatever. So you feel 
to have really a lot of conditions that you can include into the decision process to access a specific application and to secure this application. We have this identity protection topic where it lets us automatically protect against identity compromise. So we have all the cloud intelligence included about the advanced detections based on heuristics, user and entity behavior analytics, and the machine learning across the Microsoft ecosystem. Also, Microsoft puts in a lot of data about identity-related security signals, like the user behavior, the location, state of the device, um, the application being accessed, the risk score for users, and everything is analyzed and will be put as additional data into this whole process. Then we have the different controls about allow block access, limit access, require multi-factor authentication, to force a password reset, or for example an easy way to block legacy authentication in the specific part uh, by accessing uh, Microsoft Cloud infrastructure and obviously multi-cloud infrastructure and also your on-premise and web apps. Just say um, or think a little bit about an example. So, for example, I have sensitive data in a success factor implementation where I can access HR data. So I want to build up a specific a rule set that I say a specific uh, user set, in my case, all users that access the, the success factors application need to have um, specific verified, uh, better said, managed device from Intune, for example, in the perspective of mobile device and a hybrid Azure AD joint device in perspective of their mobile clients, what I use in that case. So if they have this condition in place, then they look like a more managed device and we can include that as a condition uh, to access the data and to require additional multi-factor authentication or not. Or, for example, to limit the specific access to success factors for different use cases from, for example, specific um, locations where you never have an access to your HR information. On the other hand, let's assume we have a Kerberos application that is on-premise and you publish it over the Azure Active Directory application proxy uh, with the pre-authentication in Azure Active Directory and you also can add in all the different conditions and controls uh, to secure really also your on-premise apps what you have published over the Azure Active Directory. So you really see here that this brings um, all the different aspects like the user, the device, data you access and the service in place and you can control it in different manners and to allow or disallow the specific user access to your infrastructure. Let's go a little bit deeper into a design of a conditional access policy. So let's start from the left side. So we define, for example, a specific condition that can be a user, a group, or you can also say, okay, I exclude some user or groups. On the next step, you can define is it a cloud application or not and which cloud application you want to use. The device state, this is specifically that where we can bring up the Microsoft Intune topic into the game. The location is a specific IP range. This can be a named location, that can be a specific country, that can be a blocked IP range. So you can say different conditions on this specific access. You can also define which client application is allowed and which not. For example, you don't want that legacy authentication apps can be used or can be work with that. On the other hand, we bring in the signing risk. This is a feature set that's provided by the Azure Identity Protection. It defines the risk you bring in the game. Maybe you are on a specific country, maybe you have an impossible travel, you have on the other side an anonymous traffic that you provide with your client over a Tor network or whatever, or a specific browser set or security feature set. There are different uh, things Azure Identity Protection brings in the game. This is an Azure AD Premium P2 feature, just to mention that. 
On the other hand, you can say, okay, which actions can be applied? So I allow the access or I enforce a multi-factor authentication per user or a specific application or I block the access. But keep in mind, there's not only cloud applications in the game, you can also bring the on-premises world in it. Let's just uh, imagine about an Azure AD application proxy scenario where you have a Kerberos enabled application on-premises. I will show this later in a demo uh, that you have a better idea what can be protected. Or on the other hand, if you work with Cloud App Security, which is part of day two, um, you will see that we can work really, really great with on-premises application itself. And on the other hand, obviously, all the connected or provided applications in the cloud from a software as a service perspective. So with this feature set, you're really in a great position to define exactly which user from which device with which condition have which access on which application on your on-premises infrastructure or the cloud applications. In the next demonstration, I will show you how you can configure conditional access policies in a specific scenario what I want to present you uh, to give you an idea what you can do with conditional access policies is and how it works for you in your scenarios. Obviously everything can't be co covered inside of this small demo but I want to give you really an overview and a small hint how you can start around that. So now let's go to the conditional access settings uh, to get an idea how it works through. Basically what we have, what is also influencing the conditional access part is our named locations part here inside of this scenario where we can define uh, locations like here a home office which is a specific IP range and we can say it's a trusted location or not. On the other hand we can also have countries or regions that we can include inside of this process to really define from where we have specific conditions from a network perspective. So let's now go back to the conditional access policy. You see here a few of the examples what we can go through. A typical point is that basically what we want to use is that we want, for example, to require multi-factor authentication for a specific application to protect this application. Then we want to have for example, multi-factor authentication for guests uh, if they use uh, this scenario. You see here policies built on all Mac and Bowen, for example, specific users, all guests. This is just for my scenarios, for my demonstrations that I can directly see and um, show different scenarios where we can go through, through this process. Let's go to the first example. Let's think about, we want to have a specific user, it's an internal user, I just show it here on Mac and Bowen. That's my uh, user, which I include here in this scenario, so I can say I want to address, for example, all users, selected users, uh, like guests, external users, specific directory roles like global administrators, exchange administrators, and so on. In my case, I, for example, I address Mac and Bowen from another uh, scenario so this, this is a great guest scenario what I can also include here obviously I can mix it up to say okay I want any other user included inside of this scenario so what I have here I have here a specific guest user account what's included inside of this scenario I can also exclude uh, in this case I can define the different apps where it was should look for like um, my SharePoint online account, uh, my Salesforce, what I want to use. An on-premise application I have published over the Azure AD app proxy, Outlook groups or Microsoft Teams in that case. That's a good option to work with. So I can also say user actions, for example, to register my security information, I can define, for example, from which locations I can register my security information. That could be um, an interesting scenario for that. Then I can go through the different conditions. I can include the user risk, the sign-in risk, the, the specific device platforms, what could be inside locations, 
like I have mentioned before, any location and I exclude for example my home office or my offices inside of that or all trusted locations to collect all the trusted locations that I have identified in my infrastructure and build on the named location scenario. I can go through the different client applications what happening there and also on the device state. For example, I want to configure that and want to exclude a device who is hybrid Azure AD joint or a device is marked as compliant, for example. Then we have um, on this part a grant. So I can say, for example, I want to require multi-factor authentication. I can also say I apply if it's uh, marked as compliant this device. This would be in an Intune scenario. On the other hand, we have a requirement of a hybrid Azure AD join device. That could also uh, be a good scenario for an internal uh, client that is managed with a higher security profile that I allow, I allow the access to the application without a multi-factor authentication. It's enough that the device is known, is managed and all the stuff is happening there. I also can say I want to have terms of use integrated to grant that and specifically I can use this in guest scenarios um, to address the terms of use of specific handling also right now in this uh, pandemic situations uh, where I want to uh, have a specific addressation of uh, home offices of private use um, cases and so on. And obviously, an extended step is to use um, the conditional access app controlling that. Um, I will show that in another demo where I can uh, extend the whole stuff from my conditional access part inside of this case. Also, other scenarios could be that I really want to have this for guests that they are limited to uh, web only access or I want to have just a requirement for uh, guests to be addressed as a require MFA. Let's, let's say I want to have this still for all cloud applications and I want to have a requirement for multi-factor authentication in this case. Okay, so what's going on here? Inside of that, let's just add a new user to this role. So I want to include, for example, then Chump. That's my chief executive officer here of this organization. And I just extend that and then Chump. So we have a mix between an external guest user and um, an internal uh, user itself so I just can address this in this case so what I have seen is that I have different applications what are effective I just jump over to the browser I go to my curb emslabs.ch that's my on-premise application I published over the Azure AD app proxy So Azure Active Directory jumps into the game. I need to log in here, obviously. Just provide the password. So now what's happening is coming up with the specific settings here on my device. So that I get a request for an authenticator point I just approved that on my iPhone here and I click on that topic and I'm presented to my specific Kerberos application that's just an example application that you see I'm completely negotiated with Kerberos over the Azure AD app proxy scenario and I can uh, protect this application on-prem Another example, what also could work, is specifically 
if I want to go to my Salesforce account, I just change the browser short to address this scenario. And I go to my login here, put in my account name, my password, and obviously also what's happening it's that it requires multi-factor authentication. I just approved that as well on my phone and I'm here included. What you see here is also that we are directly with a single sign on into this application into Salesforce and what's behind of that rule set is already that we use an extensive method for that. We include conditional access policies with the cloud app security and in the back end I monitor this uh, behavior all the access to these applications will be specifically monitored and I can uh, put in actions to that uh, later on in specific scenarios also another point what we can just check here on this scenario I want for example to this Kerberos application and I am a guest of this scenario for example I want to uh, log in with my private account what's happening this is the Outlook uh, multi-factor authentication or the passwordless integration better saying so I just need to approve that and the next sign in is from the multi-factor authentication of this tenant because guests are always required to prove it with multi-factor authentication and as you can see I am logged in with a guest account with a Microsoft account to a Kerberos application that runs on-prem protected by a multi-factor authentication with conditional access Okay, next we talk a bit about the Microsoft Endpoint Manager, which helps you basically to deliver the modern workplace and modern management really to keep your data secure in the cloud and on-premise. The Endpoint Manager includes uh, the services and tools you need to manage and monitor your mobile devices, your desktop computers, for example also virtual machines, embedded devices and servers. The Endpoint Manager specifically combines services you maybe know already and you use it that's included in Microsoft Intune, the configuration manager, the desktop analytics, the co-management or the Windows autopilot functionality. And these are all parts of the services of Microsoft 365. Um, they are here to help you to secure your access to protect your data and you respond to uh, the risks and security issues and to manage the risk itself. The Endpoint Manager includes uh, specific services like the Microsoft Intune, which is 100% cloud-based mobile device management or MAM solution, both in place. And it lets you configure or control features and settings on Android, Android Enterprise, iOS, iPadOS, macOS and Windows 10 devices. And it integrates greatly, obviously, on the basics of Azure Active Directory, where you can put all the different things in place. Then. We have the Configuration Manager, that's the on-premise management solution to manage desktop servers, laptops that are basically on your network or internet-based if you have the specific deployment enabled. And you can also cloud-enable it to integrate within uh, Intune, Azure Active Directory, Microsoft Defender for Endpoint and other cloud services. And you can use the Configuration Manager to deploy apps, software updates, operating systems, or you can also monitor compliance and query and act on clients in real time. And really there are a lot of more things that I can explain in these few moments. Then we have the desktop analytics feature set, which is a cloud-based service that integrates within the Microsoft Configuration Manager strategy. And it provides insights and intelligence for you as an administrator to make you more informed um, about the decisions about update readiness of your Windows clients, for example. And this service combines data from your organization with the data aggregated from other millions of devices connected to the Microsoft Cloud. 
So it helps you to improve your security readiness of your Windows clients and many other things that you can have inside of your scenarios. Then we have the Windows Autopilot, which is really a great feature set with which helps you to set up and reconfigure new devices and really to get ready to use it in a few moments. That's a great option to work with. It's specifically designed to simplify the lifecycle of Windows devices for both the IT end specific and the end user itself as well. So you get a lot of different uh, features out of this uh, scenario with this Windows Autopilot. As part of the endpoint manager, you can use Autopilot to pre-configure devices, automatically enroll it to Intune, and you can integrate it in the configuration manager and co-management for more complex device configuration scenarios. Obviously, the Azure Active Directory is the base for the usage of endpoint manager to um, the identity of devices and users and groups and to multi-factor authentication. Last but not least, we have the Endpoint Manager Admin Center, which provides you a one-stop website to really create your policy and to manage your devices. It plugs in other key device management services, including the group, security, conditional access, and the reporting itself. The Admin Center also shows devices managed by your configuration manager uh, infrastructure and Intune itself. Specifically in this slide, you see the different options, the views of the Microsoft Endpoint Manager, where you see on the left side the Microsoft Intune, the Configuration Manager and other Endpoint Management tools like the Desktop Analytics and Autopilot or any other feature set. So basically with Microsoft Intune, you can handle your Microsoft Cloud Infrastructure, the uh, Mobility Management, the PC Management and obviously the Security Administration. On the configuration manager part, you see all the on-prem view on the on-premise infrastructure, where you have your PC management, your uh, traditional PC deployment, and obviously you have this integration into intelligent cloud infrastructure with Microsoft Intune. And as I already mentioned, you see the other endpoint management tools like the desktop analytics, which I already covered, and the autopilot and different other feature sets that you can uh, be able over your whole device infrastructure in your organization. Let's discuss another approach here in this case, the mobile application management part. Basically, if we have apps without app protection policies, we have a complete mix between the corporate data and our personal data on our device, and we can uh, exchange information between the both contexts. So this is obviously um, a big issue in um, management scenario and a great part of a data loss. So specifically when apps are used without these restrictions, uh, you have really this mix of both inside and you can transfer it around all this count. So and this is the magic point where Microsoft Intune comes in with the Microsoft, or uh, better say, with the mobile application management strategy, which allows you to separate these both uh, scenarios, the corporate data access, personal data access on the same device, and to disallow, for example, or to block the sharing between a corporate application and a personal data point in that case. For example, that if you access a company resources, SharePoint, for example, um, and you are not allowed to store uh, an information from this source to your personal OneDrive, for example. So this is the main point where mobile application management comes into the game to separate these both uh, environments, the corporate data and the personal data. So on the following slide, you see exactly this protection scenario where you have the data protection with the app protection policies with the MAM approach. So you can use the app protection policies to prevent company data from saving to the local storage of the device, which we can see here on this graphic or in this image. And you can also restrict the data movement to other apps that aren't protected, that are 
The protected ones are the Cobra data, for example, and you cannot uh, move Cobra data to a personal storage, for example. So there's uh, specific things like um, the uh, protection policies, what can include the data relocation, which um, is for safe copies of org data and restrict cut, copy and paste operations, for example, and access policy settings like you want to require a simple pin for access the application and you can block managed apps from running on a jailbroken or a rooted device, for example. This brings a real great scenario into the game that you have um, an additional protection level on the application in specific on the user context of this part uh, for the corporate access that you can uh, apply uh, an additional pin policy or anything like that. In the following figure we see that we also can combine the mobile application management part or the security of the app with the traditional MDM approach. So this uh, brings, for example, the MDM solution that adds specific values like the enrollment of the device, the deployment of the apps to the device and the pre-configuration and it provides, for example, an ongoing device compliance and management. On the other hand, with the app protection policies, we can also add additional values by providing, for example, different things like you can help you to protect company data from leaking to consumer apps on services if specifically the device is also allowed for private usage or personal usage. You can apply restrictions like safe as clipboard pin to specific client applications and you can uh, have a very restrictive wipe of company data when needed from apps without removing those apps from the device or personal content in specific. So this is also a really great option that you can combine these two scenarios and bring out the most value for our organization. Here we see the specific approach about data protection with apps or app protection policies for devices without an enrollment. This specifically for bring your own devices that are not enrolled in any MDM solution. And the app protection policies apply on the culprit, focus on the culprit sign in. So, but in this case, we have obviously some limitations you need to be aware about. So, for example, you can't deploy apps to the device automatically, which is allowed obviously over MDM solution where you handle the whole device for you, your users, and the end user has to get the apps from the store specific and to buy the apps if they need to use that. Um, that's a specific scenario on that place. And you can't provision certificate profiles on these devices, so if you want to have an access to your uh, wireless LAN infrastructure in your scenario, in your organization, you need to have another process around to uh, deploy the certificates on the specific device. With an MDM solution uh, with Intune, you are able about the certificate connector and the SCAP integration to directly deploy certificates on your devices, but then you need to be in an MDM in a mobile device management scenario itself. On the other hand, obviously you can't provision company Wi-Fi and VPN settings on the devices. It's the same scenario uh, like we have with the certificates and most of the time there is a combination with Wi-Fi, VPN and uh, certificates. So that's uh, I think the biggest limitations what you have that you need to find another solution around that to deploy the settings and the certificates on the specific device what is covered in the bring your own device strategy. We can use the following administration flow to provide um, the mobile application management scenario on a device. First of all, you need really to see is the app supported for mobile application management policies. The second thing is that you create an Azure AD group um, of users or devices where you want to apply the policies that you can do this specifically to um, several departments or several users in your game. 
and then you can add the app to the Intune portal itself and you must upload a line of business application to Intune cloud storage or specify a URL for the web apps or link a store app to Intune. So there are many uh, different capabilities you can use. Um, you can use for line of business applications uh, to define the configuration of the installation requirements, the detection rules, you can provide command line arguments or whatever you need for deploying that topic. On the other hand, you configure the policy so you can manage the application features and protect data by deploying an app configuration and an app protection policy itself. Uh, at least you can monitor the results of the application in your portal. So you exactly see is the app uh, deployed and which devices or whatever. There are some errors that you can investigate in the whole monitoring and the deployment scenario. And you can review that all the installation status for the app, either by the device or by the user itself. In the next demonstration, I will provide you an example of an app protection policy which is deployed over the Endpoint Manager. Okay, let's take a closer look in the Endpoint Manager Admin Center where we want to configure an app protection policy with the Endpoint Manager itself. I already prepared one uh, application protection policy for iOS devices where you see here which is not already deployed to any device in my infrastructure. But let's take a short look what we can do here on the protection level specifically for an iOS device. If we see here on the already existing policy, we see that we have different applications included in our app protection policy, like the Adobe Acrobat Reader, Excel Outlook, so you see the whole Microsoft Suite here inside of this connection. So if we click on properties here, we see, I think on the basic information, it's nothing special. We just decided to have it here for an iOS part. If I create a new one, obviously I choose iOS, iPod OS uh, here on this case. And then we um, want to have the target on the specific um, applications what we want to use. We can put here the public apps what we have already inside. We can select this one directly on the store that we can really work with that. Obviously we need to have a support for application protection inside of the specific application itself. You see here the apps that are basically there that we can work with what already supported for an MAM scenario here in this case. So I already have chosen these applications here on all the specific device types. We can also go here inside of that and say we have an unmanaged or managed scenario. In my case I use it for all of them. Then the next point what we can choose here inside of this part is the data protection level what we want to use here. For example, is it allowed to make a backup of the org data uh, to iTunes and iCloud backups? I already have blocked that here. We can also say where we can send org data to other apps. I included only policy managed apps would have included, so only in the corporate context in that case. Then save copies of org data. Then uh, we can also transfer telecommunication data to a dialer application or to specific dialer applications. We can define where we receive data from other apps or how we can restrict cut, copy and paste operations between other applications. I just used here the policy managed app so I can just use it in the business context itself. Do we allow third party keyboards? I think this is essential for iOS devices or for Android devices if you want to connect a third party keyboard to it then how we go through the encryption scenario on this case and where we restrict web transfer with other applications. That's also a typical process here in that case. So we have a lot of operations or things you can uh, target your system. Also we have access requirements. What we can choose, for example, 
we need a specific pin for access. We define the pin type, is it simple or not, the pin length. Is it allowed to use touch ID to override the biometrics with the pin after a timeout? And do we need to have work or school account credentials for access that we have a sign on in this place uh, specifically established? So there is also a lot of functionality in also what's happening if a conditional is launched like maximum pin attempts, offline grade periods, uh, grace periods and so on. And obviously later on we say the assignment to a specific device group for example or to a specific user group in that case. So that's basically on um, a created one here in that case if you just jump in side of this place and you want to create a new one on that I think it's an easy process you just choose your platform for what you want you also have this for Windows 10 you can also say is it enrolled or is it not enrolled let's call it here Windows 10 short and then we can go also to the specific apps what we want to target we can directly jump in the pre-configured we can import them with specific configurations and then we can uh, add here specific functionality like the required settings we want to use Windows information protection mode to say okay what's happening inside of this construct which domain is it necessary and then we have all the advanced settings for example for data protection what we want to use encryption keys the MDM configuration also the pin requirements and all of that stuff so you see here we have also a great option to work with on this app policy so what we have seen we have seen the an existing policy and application protection policy on an iOS device and how to create a new policy in that case. Next we go to the next feature set of Microsoft Store for Business. This is designed for organizations and specifically the Microsoft Store for Business and Microsoft Store for Education give you a very nice and flexible way to find, acquire, manage and distribute free and paid apps in selected markets to Windows 10 devices in volume. So you can manage Microsoft Store apps and private line of business apps in one inventory. So additionally also you can plus assign and reuse licenses as you need. You can choose the best distribution method for your organization. So you can use directly assign apps to individuals and teams or you can publish apps to private pages in Microsoft Store or connect with a management solution for more and more options. The Microsoft Store for Business have several features like you can scale it all to your fit of the size of your business. For example, um, for smaller businesses with Azure AD accounts or Office 365 accounts and Windows 10 devices, you can quickly have an end-to-end -end process for acquiring and distributing content using the Store for Business. For larger environments, all the capabilities of the store for business uh, are available to you. Or you can integrate Microsoft Store for Business with management tools for a greater control over access to apps and app updates. You can use the existing work or school accounts. You have also the capability to have bulk app acquisitions to acquire apps in volume from the Microsoft Store for Business. Otherwise, uh, you have the centralized management. So it, the Microsoft Store provides you a centralized management for inventory, billing, permissions, and order history. You can use the Microsoft Store to view, manage, and abuse, distribute items purchased from the different kinds of stores. The Microsoft Store for Business, the Microsoft Store for Education, Office 365, and the volume licensing. There is also a private store available that you can create for your business and that's easily available from any Windows 10 device. Your private store is available from Microsoft Store on Windows 10 or with a browser on the web. So people 
in your organization can download apps from your organization's private store on Windows 10 devices. So there are also flexible distribution option, options. So you can distribute through Microsoft Store services where you can assign apps to individual employees or make apps available to all employees in your private store. Or you use a management tool for Microsoft or a third party tool for advanced distribution and management functions or for managing images, for example. There is also the offline licensing model uh, that allows you to distribute apps without connecting to store services and for managing Im images in that case. On the other hand, we have a line of business apps. So we can privately add and distribute your internal line of business apps and using any of the distribution options. The app license management is also included and can reclaim and reuse app licenses. Online and offline licenses allow you to customize how you decide to deploy the apps. There is also an up-to-date apps. So Microsoft Store manages the update process for apps with online licenses. Apps are automatically updated so you are always current with the most recent software updates and product features. So for business apps, also uninstall cleanly without leaving behind extra files uh, for times when you need to switch apps for specific employees. There's also an Office App Launcher, which allows you to Office apps working with the Microsoft Store for Business. In the next section, we go through the Windows 10 deployment planning. To plan your Windows 10 deployment, you should follow the following considerations. First of all, we have three deployment methods that in general are available. So we have the in-place upgrades, the traditional wipe and load, and the dynamic provisioning. Just an exam tip, you need to really know all these deployment considerations because there are a lot of questions sometimes in the exam itself. So basically the in-place upgrade uh, is suitable when you want to keep all uh, existing applications. Uh, when you do not plan to significantly change the device configuration, for example, BIOS to AV or operating system configurations from the architecture perspective, like the x86 to x64, uh, language changes and such a thing, so on. Uh, the traditional wipe and load is a specific, a suitable scenario when you want to upgrade a significant number of applications along with the new Windows operating system, or when you want to make a significant uh, device or operating system configuration change. So this is a typical approach for x86 to x64, for example, or if you want to do a BIOS or UEFI configuration change in that place. Otherwise, uh, it's a good option when you start a clean installation on that topic. The last one is the dynamic provisioning. This is specifically suitable for new devices and especially uh, choose your own device scenarios when you want to simplify configuration uh, with not a re-imaging scenario. Or when you want to use it in a combination with a management tool, for example, uh, MDM service like Microsoft Intune, uh, then it enables you a self-service installation of user-specific or role-specific apps. Another important topic we need to discuss is Windows as a service. Basically, Windows 10 as a, a service it's, uh, and Windows 10 itself is a comprehensive desktop operating system. It really allows you to work efficiently and securely. And keeping the desktop operating system up to date, obviously that's an important task um, because it helps to uh, run devices more efficiently and stay protected over the while. Windows as a service uh, is specifically a new way to work with the Windows desktop. In the past, new features were released every few years and required a significant effort for de deployment. And with Windows as a service, um, we have new features released twice a year. And by releasing these new features in bite-sized chunks uh, rather than major new versions, the work required by you as the IT guys is really reduced on that part. The Windows as a Service model is uh, specifically designed to make your life easier for you and your uh, users itself. And specifically there are two types of updates like features and quality fixes. 
feature updates uh, are released twice a year because these updates are more frequent, they are smaller, and they give you a number of benefits. For example, you have less disruption, uh, users are more protective with um, early access to new Windows features, uh, your organization could be in a better security state. Um, users can take less time to adopt smaller changes, to learn smaller changes. And um, yeah, you will have less workload and cost impact uh, by updating in this scenario. Then we have the quality updates, which includes fixes, security patches, and they are usually issued once a month. So. There are specific benefits around that. So you have identified security issues that can be fixed very quickly and deployed very quickly. Then um, everyone receives the security fixes regularly and keeping really all the devices aligned in your scenario. To manage Windows as a service, um, in the Configuration Manager, you can view the state of Windows as a service in your environment. And you can create uh, servicing plans to from deployment rings and ensure the Windows 10 systems are kept up to date with new builds are released. Um, you can also view alerts when Windows 10 clients are near end of support for their semi-annual channel build, for example, in that case. Let's think short around the deployment options for Windows 10. We have the Windows Autopilot, you have the in-place upgrade, the dynamic provisioning, and the subscription activation. So Windows Autopilot, we have already discussed around that, and you can customize the out-of-the-box experience to deploy apps and settings that are pre-configured for your organization. It includes just the apps your users need or anything like that. Autopilot is really the easiest way to deploy a new PC running Windows 10. You can also use it with a Configuration Manager to upgrade from Windows 7 or Windows 8.1 to Windows 10, for example. On the other hand, we have the in-place upgrade. An upgrade, uh, a device operating system without reinstalling, basically. So you can migrate apps, user data, settings from one version of Windows to another one, like going from Windows 8.1 to Windows 10. You can also update from one release of Windows 10 to the next, like going from Windows 10 version 18.0.0 to Windows 10 version 18.0.9 or now the newer versions, uh, what we have in place. The dynamic provisioning is specifically to create a provisioning package to um, mainly quickly configure one or more devices, so even those without the network connectivity. So you can create provisioning packages with the Windows Configuration Designer and you can install them over a network uh, from a removable media like a USB drive or a new field communication uh, NFC tags or barcodes, for example. Then we have the subscription activation um, where we use a subscription to switch from uh, one edition of Windows 10 to another one. For example, you can switch from Windows 10 Pro to Windows 10 Enterprise. Uh, when a licensed user, for example, signs into the device and um, they have credential associated with a Windows 10 E3 or E5 license. So the OS changes from Windows 10 Pro to Windows 10 Enterprise and all the appropriate Windows 10 Enterprise features are unlocked in that case. If the subscription expires or is transferred to another user, uh, the device reverts seamless to Windows 10 Pro Edition after a grace period of 90 days. In addition to those new tools, um, you can deploy obviously Windows 10 with desktop management tools and existing tools in your organization, uh, including Intune, Azure AD, or the Configuration Manager itself. Okay, let's come to the types of updates in Windows 10. We have these feature updates and the quality updates, where the feature updates uh, provide new functionality and are usually released twice a year. So you should deploy these updates using your existing tools, for example. Because these new features come out more in the individual updates themselves are smaller, make it easy to deploy across the organization, 
and it also introduces less changes per update, which makes it easier for you and your end users to work with. The quality updates, um, which specifically provide security updates and fixes, uh, and they are very quick released uh, once a month. So on the second Tuesday of the month, the patch Tuesday, as you already know, Microsoft releases a cumulative update that includes all the past quality updates. And this makes it very easy or better for you to be sure your devices are up to date and to make your own testing more effective and more closely aligned uh, to the devices where we, for example, use in the Microsoft scenario in that case. Another important topic is the write update channel. So we have this Windows Insider program, the semi-annual channel and the LTS or the long-term servicing channel. Specific you to mind which devices in your environment get which update, uh, updates when uh, and which using of the channel is in place. There are these three servicing channels in Windows as a service. The Insider program, which allows you to get early access to pre-release Windows 10 builds um, and it's updating obviously very frequently sometimes weekly and you get the newest feature brand new features and you can use these insider builds to explore and test new and modified features before you deploy them and you can also provide the direct feedback to Microsoft on these updates to improve the whole scenario for other organizations then we have this semi-annual channel, which is the update twice a year with new features. And devices in this semi-annual channel get updates as soon as Microsoft release them. So you can further control the timing, obviously, of when devices get updated by using a different feature. So that's available in Windows Update for Business, in Configuration Manager, or in the Windows Server Update Service. So you can delay the installation until it's convenient for you to and your organization to deploy these updates. Then we have the long-term servicing channel, the LTS. So this is specifically designed to be used only with specialized devices that can't be regularly updated. You need to have an extensive testing, for example. And we have the LTS channel that is released every two or three years. So this channel is updated with security fixes and obviously needed uh, so your devices will still be secure and Microsoft 365 apps isn't uh, supported in this channel this as a additional note on this side now we can have a few discussions about the right deployment ring we have the ring name preview test organization line of business and the LTS part uh, where we can or which we can use inside of our scenarios with the different uh, feature updates, uh, the quality updates that are included, and the channels, obviously, how they can be used. So Windows 10 basically uses these deployment rings uh, with update channels to control how and when updates are applied to your devices. At its most basic, a uh, deployment ring is a group of devices to update at the same time. So the number of rings you need to depend on variety of factors, obviously including the number of devices you have. So how many different update channels you need to use or even how many organizations you have in your company, for example. No one can tell you how many rings you should have or which and how many devices should go in each ring. So that really depends on your organization, on your strategy and it's entirely really up to you. So by defining and using a deployment ring, you can effectively control how features and quality updates are deployed inside of your organization. And you should start to think about using Windows as a service as an ongoing process rather than a specific uh, project to update Windows. Let's assume the following examples. Um, for example, these ring names are examples and really aren't related to specific builds, what we see here in this um, slide. So for example, unlike Microsoft 365 apps, Windows as a service doesn't have a release or targeted, for example. So you can choose ring names that make sense for you. 
Uh, these deployment rings also have different settings for deferring updates, use Windows Update for Business, Configuration Manager, or Windows Server Update Services to really control the deferral periods. This is just an example here. We see the preview is included in the Windows Insider Program Channel, uh, deferral feature updates, no, also the quality updates with a small group, for example, for testing, for pre-release tests. Then we have the test with the semi-annual channel. Also with this part, another group of devices um, to test specifically. Then the organization, the semi-annual channel, which is a 120 days period. And the quality updates, 7 to 14 days. So that's basically for most of the users. Line of business and the LTSC strategy for isolated devices that can't use the semi-annual channel. So this is just an example what you can see here that you can cover in your strategy as well. For example, when you initially deploy new Windows devices, Windows 10 Autopilot could be a very nice option that leverages the OEM optimized version of Windows 10 uh, that is pre-installed on the device and it saves a lot of time and efforts for an organization to maintain custom images or drivers for every model of device that being used. Instead of rematching the device, your existing Windows 10 installation can be transformed into a business ready state to apply settings and policies, install applications, and even changing the addition of Windows 10 being used. An example from a Windows 10 Pro to a Windows 10 Enterprise. This is uh, su supported in an advanced features. So once uh, deployed, a Windows 10 device can be managed by tools such as Microsoft Intune, Windows Update for Business, um, the System Center Configuration Manager, or any similar tool. Uh, Windows Autopilot can also be used re to repurpose a device by leveraging Windows Autopilot reset to quickly prepare a device for a new user or in a break-fix scenario to enable a device to quickly be brought back to a business-ready state. So basically, Windows Autopilot enables you to automatically join devices to Azure Active Directory or Active Directory via the hybrid Azure AD join option, or the auto-enrollment of devices into the MDM service like uh, Microsoft Intune, the restriction of the administrator account creation, the create and auto assign devices to configuration groups based on a device profile, and you can have a customized OBE content specific to your organization. You can use the following steps to manage updates for Windows 10. So learn about uh, the updates and servicing channels. That's quite important to know on which uh, channels you get the right things. Prepare your servicing strategy for the Windows 10 updates. Build uh, the different deployment rings for your Windows 10 updates. Assign the devices to servicing channels for Windows 10 updates. And specifically optimize update delivery for Windows 10 updates. And at least uh, deploy updates using the Windows Update for Business or uh, deploy the Windows 10 updates using the Windows Server Update Service, the WSOS or deploy Windows 10 updates using, for example, the System Center Configuration Manager. So what brings the follow-up feature set of Desktop Analytics? Desktop Analytics is a cloud-based service that integrates with Configuration Manager. Uh, the service provides insight and intelligence for you to make you more informed about decisions about your update readiness of your Windows 10 client. It combines data from your organization with uh, data aggregated from millions of devices connected to Microsoft Cloud Services. So you can use the desktop analytics with a Configuration Manager to create an inventory of apps running in your organization, assess app compatibility with the latest Windows 10 feature updates. You can identify compatibility issues and receive mitigation suggestions based on cloud-enabled data insights. And you can create pilot groups that represent the entire application and driver estate across a minimal set of devices. And last but not least, you can deploy Windows 10 to pilot and to protect and manage devices. So as I already mentioned, Desktop Analytics is a successor of the Windows Analytics 
So Windows Analytics Service includes upgrade readiness, update compliance, and device health. And all of these capabilities are combined in Desktop Analytics Service. So the Desktop Analytics is also is more tightly integrated with Configuration Manager. So which benefits you will get if you use the Desktop Analytics? Uh, you get a device and software inventory with the key factors such as apps and versions of Windows. You get a pilot identification of the smallest set of devices that provides the widest coverage of factors. It really focuses on the factors that are most important to a pilot of Windows upgrades and updates. And it's making sure that the pilot is more successful and allows you to proceed more quickly and confidently to a broad deployment in production. The third option, what you get is the issue identification. So using the aggregated market data along with data from your environment, the service predicts potential issues to getting and staying current with Windows. Uh, it then success potential mitigations. And fourth, the configuration manager integration that's well done. And the service uh, cloud enables your existing on-premises infrastructure and use this data and analysis to deploy and manage Windows on your devices. Next we'll talk about the monitoring in Windows updates with update compliance. So update compliance uh, enables specifically your organization to monitor security, the quality and feature updates, what we have discussed for Windows 10 Pro, for education and for e enterprise editions. You can have specific reports of device and updates issued to the related compliance that you need to attend to. And you can check a lot of things about bandwidth savings incurred across multiple content types by using the delivery optimization. Update compliance is offered through the Azure portal and is included as a part of the Windows 10 licenses listed in the prerequisites. The Azure Log Analytics ingestion and retention charges are not incurred on your Azure subscription or update compliance data. The update compliance uses Windows 10 diagnostic data for all of its reports. So it collects the system data including update deployment progress, the Windows update for business configuration data and the delivery optimization usage data. and Basically, it sends this data to a customer-owned Azure Log Analytics workspace uh, to power the experience and to gather all the information you need inside of your org. Also, we take a closer look in the feature updates in Desktop Analytics. As you see in the view, it summarizes the feature updates for devices that are running Windows 10. So in-service means that the devices are running the latest feature update for that version and channel. Near end of the service, uh, this is, uh, I mean, the devices are running a feature update that's within 90 days of reaching end of service. End of service means devices are running a feature update that's past the end of the service date. Not measured is uh, the same as before in the security updates. The last security features we pick out because of the focus inside of the MS101 exam is BitLocker. And BitLocker in specific is uh, Drive Encryption and it provides a data protection feature that integrates with the operating system and addresses the threats of data theft or exposure from lost or stolen or inappropriately decommissioned computers. So BitLocker provides the most protection when used with a trusted platform module version 1.2 or later to store all the information on it. The TPM is a hardware component installed in many uh, of the newer computers by the computer manufacturers. It works with BitLocker to help protect user data and to ensure that a computer has not been tampered with while a system was offline. On computers that uh, do not have a TPM version 1.2 or later, you can still use BitLocker to encrypt the Windows operating system drive. However, this implementation will require the user to insert a USB startup key to start a computer or to resume from hibernation. 
Starting with Windows 8, you can use an operating system volume password uh, to protect your operating system volume on a computer without a TPM chip. Both options do not provide uh, the pre-startup system integrity verification offered by BitLogger with a TPM. In uh, addition to TPM, BitLogger also provides you the option to lock the normal startup process until the user supplies a personal identification number pin or inserts a removable device such as a USB flash drive that contains a startup key. These additional security measures provide multi-factor authentication and assurance that the computer will not start to resume from hibernation until the correct pin or startup key is presented. So with the deprecation of the MBAM feature that was usually working with the BitLocker to provide a self-service uh, to recover your keys, um, to provide you TPM information and many other things to deploy the BitLocker, it's already replaced with a great solution in Microsoft Intune uh, to deploy a BitLocker very easy to uh, your devices. I will show this in a demonstration uh, later on in this specific module. Obviously, as you can see in a slide, uh, you can use the BitLocker drive encryption tools to manage BitLocker as well. It provides you command line tools like the manage minus BDE command uh, to use that command line for example protecting your operating system volumes, check the status with manage minus BDE minus status and you can see uh, is the BitLocker drive encryption enabled, uh, how is the conversion status of it, which specific encryption method was used in that field. You can also manage uh, the protectors, add them, uh, for example, startup keys and other options. And you can also um, alternatively protect um, all the stuff on it with a non-TPM hardware approach. Um, that is also can be done with a manage minus BDE minus protectors minus add C uh, column minus PV for password. And there are different other options what you can do with that. You can also use uh, the data volumes with it. You can repair uh, disks and all the stuff. Uh, but it's highly recommended really that you put the whole management into Microsoft Intune. But be aware in the exam, take a look at the description of the command lines because sometimes it's really they ask for exactly these command lines how you can manage the BitLocker environment on your Windows 10 devices. In the next demo I will show you how you can enable BitLocker drive encryption in Windows 10 with Microsoft Intune, how easy it is over the endpoint protection scenario to really deploy this feature on your Windows 10 client. Now we will configure an endpoint security component on a Windows 10 device to enable BitLocker. You will find it here directly on the endpoint security section and then you have the disk encryption. I already prepared uh, this specific uh, policy and what we see here in this case we have a direct overview, what happens, what was succeeding and all of that stuff and also how many groups are assigned and it's specifically assigned itself. So let's take a closer look to the properties. Basically what we have here on the basics we see that it's a Windows 10 BitLocker protection. This is just a name. It's applied to Windows 10 and later. Then I have built up a group with the specific devices inside. It's called Windows 10 BitLocker protection. That's included. I also can exclude the scenarios and I put in the specific settings. So what I have enabled is I enabled the full disk encryption for OS and fixed uh, data drives. Then I didn't require storage cards to be encrypted and hide prompt about third party encryption. I didn't do that. I put the enable rotation on Azure AD and hybrid Azure AD joint devices inside of that scenario.
So uh, what I can do here, I store the key, the BitLocker recovery key in the profile on Azure Active Directory. So on the self-service, on my, my apps, I can directly access that on every place where we're a web browser to unencrypt or to unblock my device. Then I defined the recovery key field file generation to backup recovery information in Azure Active Directory and different settings on the fixed drive recovery scenario and also built here on the OS drive here I configured the encryption method because I just work on Windows 10 I don't want to have interoperability with Windows 10 clients or older uh, clients um, that's the basic stuff what I do and I didn't uh, define any BitLocker uh, scenario for the removal uh, drive topics here I just configure it I wanted to have this uh, version the encryption method so it's not really compatible with all the versions but I just want to use this on the scenario <coughs> and I didn't block the right access to devices configured in other organizations and so on so how it looks like basically um, if we jump to a client that's my Windows 10 client just to give you a short information around that topic if I use the DSREC CMD exit tool, you see here that I have specifically a device that is hybrid Azure AD joint. So in my local domain, it's domain joint and in Azure AD. So I also can kick up the settings. So if I just uh, go here to sign or to specifically sync your settings you can jump over access work and school then you see here the specific uh, settings on that part obviously the different accounts that are included what all happening here my domain for example I can go to this info section and then I kick up my a specific sync to the to get the policy on the device and you will pop up an encryption needed setting here on that part so I can directly jump into the section and I have here the dialog I don't have any other disk encryption software installed encrypt all my disks and don't ask me again so I just run into and I can start to that topic. Obviously, what I see here directly the interaction because I have a device chosen with uh, it's not able to use the um, trusted platform module, so you have also direct interaction. That would be a first discovery option that you use. Is it really a device that you can use with this option? And you can choose that in your policy, obviously. If we go back here to the properties, to the settings, and there is an option where I can define specifically my information about the usage of TPM chips and so on. So you can correct it and directly start with the process to encrypt this device. That's an easy part here. I just can go back here to that scenario and then I have all the configuration settings in place to have this on board. So that's a great way to directly jump in and configure your settings and start encrypting your devices with BitLocker. Okay, we are on the end of day one where we have focused on the implementation of modern device services. What's coming up tomorrow? We work through the implementation of Microsoft 365 Security and Threat Management, where we go through the Cloud App Security, the implementation of Threat Management, and the implementation of Microsoft Defender for Endpoint. Obviously, to reach this Microsoft 365 Enterprise Admin Expert level, we have this recommended certification about the Exam MS101 
the Microsoft 365 mobility and security part in it. As always, as I mentioned in these uh, webinars or in these courses, uh, really take a closer look on the docs.microsoft.com website really to see what the skill is measured, uh, the content about implementation of modern device services, the implementation about Microsoft 365 security and threat management, and the governance and compliance features which build the main structure for this specific exam which you can book. Now at the end of this module I want to give you some information about how you can go further. There's a really great self-paced learning resource for MS101 on the Learn platform, on the Microsoft Learn platform. I highly recommend you to do all the labs, to all the stuff there to prepare you for this exam. Last but not least, give me the chance to give you a great, great thanks that you go this journey with me and I'm really happy to see you on the next module. Thank you for sharing your knowledge with us today. I hope our participants will really benefit from it. Also, as an additional resource, let me remind you that this series on Microsoft 365 Mobility and Security MS 101 will also be available for you to watch on demand at aka.ms slash enable VTS and aka.ms slash training center. In fact, you can find more virtual training series available for your on-demand consumption there. Thank you to all the participants for joining us. Hope you enjoyed today's session. We'll see you again tomorrow. Goodbye.